Aha, we can cancel out the x, right? And that's why exactly we need the a over x. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, we'll be talking about how to partial fractions, especially for the integration purpose. However, we'll just be focusing on the setups because we know that the setups are the most important things in the question, right? Okay, so here we go. What are partial fractions for? Well, ideally speaking, we like to or we want to integrate the following rational functions. The first one is the one that has the linear function on the bottom, and the second one is the one that has the quadratic ax squared plus a squared on the bottom. We like to integrate these two so much because they have nice answers. The first one is the one that you will get the natural log. The second one is the one that you will get the inverse tangent. And don't forget the plus c. Okay, notice that for the second one, x squared plus a squared, we cannot factor that with real numbers. And sometimes you may end up with a situation that has three terms. In that case, be sure you complete the square in order to get into this form. And in fact, we can integrate some variations of these two rational functions as well. The first one is the integral of 1 over a linear, right, ax plus b, and then to the nth power. In this case, n should not be equal to 1, otherwise you end up with the first situation. And for this, please just go ahead and do use up, and then use the reverse power rule. And another one for you guys is when we have an x on the top over ax squared plus b. In this case, just go ahead and do use up. Let u equal to the bottom, and in the end, you actually end up with a natural log situation, right? Because we have the x on the top. That's the idea. And if you guys want to see the result for the bottom left corner one, it's right here. But I wouldn't recommend you guys to memorize this too much. Just do use up and reverse power rule. That will work out much better. So these are the four types of integrals with rational functions that we really like and we really want to integrate. However, you know, unfortunately, we don't always get what we like or what we want in real life. <laughs> but it's okay, because partial fractions will help us out. So partial fractions, decomposition, PFD. Notice it's not PDF, right? So let's see. Here is the first situation that we have to pay attention to, technically case zero. Sometimes we will have to do polynomial long division first. And the main thing is that we will have to pay attention to the degree because when we have a rational function, we have a polynomial divided by another polynomial. So we are going to make sure that the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. If that's not the case, then go ahead and do polynomial long division first before we can really talk about the setups. All right, here is the real case one. When we have distinct linear factors, different linear factors. We like to use the word distinct in math. I don't know why, but it means different because we want to be different as well, I guess. All right, so example number one, when we have one over x squared minus seven x plus 10, notice that we have a quadratic, but this quadratic is actually factorable. And when we factor that, we get one over x minus two times x minus five. Then we can actually break this down into two smaller fractions. The first one will have x minus two on the bottom, and the second one will have x minus five on the bottom. And because both of the factors on the bottoms are linear, that means on the top, we will have constants because the top, when you do the setup, it will have to be one degree less than the bottom. And traditionally, we'll just use capital A and capital B for these unknown constants. And to figure A and B, you can use what we call the cover up method, which I'm going to demonstrate that in another video. So now let's continue. Example number two, notice that I actually have the same denominator, but the top is 2x plus 1 now. Well, the degree on the top is still less than the degree on the bottom, so we still just factor the bottom. And let me tell you, we actually will have the same setup. We will still have a over x minus 2 plus b over x minus 5. So the idea of this one right here is that if they have the same denominator, as long as the degree on the top is less than the degree on the bottom, we have the same setup. 
But of course, the A and B in example number one will be different than the A and B in example number two. This is actually so cool because this right here also works when we have three factors. So when we have this, we can break it down and you can guess it. We will have just A over X minus one plus B over X minus three plus C over X minus five. And again, for all this, you can use the cover method. This is perhaps the best case and the students like this so much. All right, continue case two when we have irreducible quadratic factors. So let's take a look at this rational function here. Well, notice that at the bottom, we have x plus 3, which is linear, but x squared plus 4 is quadratic, and we cannot factor that anymore with real numbers. However, let's go ahead and break this down into two fractions. The first one is blank over x plus 3. The second one is blank over x squared plus 4. For the first one, you know the deal. We have a constant on the top. But for the second one, because the bottom is a quadratic, the top has to be one degree less than the bottom. So we are going to set it up as a linear and just continue with our alphabets. So bx plus c, right? And to figure out the a, b, c right here, um, the cover method only works out for a and then for the b and c, uh, we have to do some work. But again, watch my other videos for the demonstration for that. Another example, this is a much bigger rational function, but the degree on the top, because we have x squared, so it's 2. The degree on the bottom, well, x to a third power, so the degree is 3. That means we're good to go. First, we factor out the bottom, and when we have x squared plus 4x plus 13, unfortunately, we cannot factor that anymore with real numbers. So go ahead and break it down into blank over x and then blank over x squared plus 4x plus 13. And you see the first one has a already. The a wants to jump out already. And the second one, well, because the bottom is a quadratic, we will have bx plus c because you have to set it as a linear factor. So that's it. Now continue to case three, and this is a trickier situation where we have repeating factors. Well, let's take a look at example number six, 2x minus five over x to a third power plus x squared. Well, let's factor out the x squared on the bottom. Notice x squared is quadratic, yes, but x squared is technically x times x, which is a linear factor multiply itself twice, right? In this situation, when we have repeating factors, remember the following. You have to build up the powers. Let me show you. What we do first is we will have one fraction with x to the first power, another fraction with x to the second power. Look at the first two fractions. That's what I mean by build up the powers. And the third one is, of course, x plus 1 on the bottom. Well, I'm going to explain why we really need the x to the first power for the first fraction, but let's continue first. Right here, because we have linear on the bottom, so we will have the constant on the top, a over x to the first power then. And then you have to remember, whenever we are building other powers, we have to keep the top to be the same kind. So for the second one, it's technically just a constant b, b over x to the second power, all right? Even though x squared is quadratic, but we actually took care of the issue already with the building on the power, and I'll explain that to you guys after I put down a C over X plus one, right? Now, if you really want to break down the original into two fractions, the first one with X squared on the bottom and the second with X plus one on the bottom, that's okay. But on the top, if you do it this way, for the first one, you will have to put down a linear factor. So let's put down AX plus B. And for the second one, we are going to put down just a constant. And the reason that for the first one, we just have a linear because we didn't build out the powers, right? But because of that, have a look. What can we do with the first fraction? Yes, we can split it and we get this, right? And then what can we do next? Yes, we can cancel the X. And that's exactly how we end up with the A over X term. Why bother to go through the blue part every single time? Just go through what I showed you guys earlier, B 
build up the powers and then make sure the top stay the same kind. That's the idea. That's the way to go. Let me show you guys another example. Number seven, this is what we have. Notice that x plus two to the third power, it's repeating, right? That means x plus two times x plus two times x plus two. So here we go. First one with x on the bottom and then x plus two to the first power and then x plus two to the second power and then x plus two to the third power. Build up the powers. The first one we will have a over x. The second one, again, x plus two is linear, so another constant on the top. And then for the rest, because the top will have to stay the same kind, so we have c over x plus two squared. And the last one, we just need to have a d on the top, just like that. For the last example, well, I'll give you guys a repeating factor, but that's an irreducible quadratic. So let's take a look right here. x plus five over x times x squared plus four and then squared. So we have blank over x and then blank over x squared plus four to the first power and then blank over x squared plus four to the second power. For the first fraction, we need a. For the second fraction, we need a linear factor bx plus c because the bottom is an irreducible quadratic. And then for the last one, well, the top will have to stay the same kind because, you know, we're just putting on the powers. So that's what we have. However, I have never asked my students these kind of questions on the exams because they're just way, way, way too much. So hopefully all these examples are helpful. And now it's your time for you guys to try the following questions. Uh, four questions for you guys to try. Just go ahead and set up the form for the partial fractions. And the solutions are in the description for you guys already. And also work out the integrations for you guys as well. Thank you for watching. And that's it.